Hi everyone, welcome back to the Brush by Brandy YouTube channel. This week we're working on this piece that's behind me and this one's a little bit modern. This piece actually came from a customer of mine who uh, was having an estate sale and she asked if I wanted to take it home, um, which I love to do. I always appreciate when it's offered to me and if I have the space and the ability, um, I'll take pieces home on occasion when they're offered. And this was one, it's a beautiful piece. It's a little bit modern, a little bit sleek. And so I wanted to do a fairly modern finish on it. So we're gonna give a treatment to the top the body has some new colors from Wise All Paint in the, their One Hour Enamel collection. Um, it's a very outdoorsy collection with uh, six beautiful colors, five beautiful colors, five colors <laughs> that are all inspired by nature, which is really, really hot right now. And you can see I tied that in with my staging effects also to bring in those sort of nature inspired colors. So I think it came out gorgeous. I love the gold accents on this one. I love the top. Um, it's a great look for a really nice, clean, modern piece. Let's go ahead and get started. Here's where I started on this dresser. This one was actually given to me by one of my customers and it's not my usual style, but I love doing these modern pieces in a solid single color and creating a mid-century modern piece. I needed some help on my pieces this week. I just had a lot to do. The work was a little overwhelming, so I called in the recruits and this is gonna be a family affair. I made sure and gave this piece a really good cleaning. My assistant here is going to show you how. Now, I will tell you I cleaned this piece beforehand, but don't tell him that. Once this piece was nice and clean, I rinsed it with some water, and then there's a drawer in the wrong place, so I made sure to switch those around. Here are some of the supplies that I get out every time I do a little bit of spraying. So I've got some paint strainers. These are just from the hardware store. Of course, some stirrers, some safety goggles, a respirator, and then my spray gun. And this one attaches to an air compressor, so I've got out the compressor hose. We're getting some help on this one from my husband, better known as Sprayed by Sean. Yep, he's going to do some spraying for me today. He's going to go ahead and spray the paint. We're spraying Wiseal One Hour Enamel, which sprays beautifully. And in this sprayer, it doesn't require any dilution, but that could depend on your sprayer. You can dilute up to 10% with One Hour Enamel. You do want to make sure you always strain it first. So this is just a paper paint strainer. We're going to let that run through until it fills the container completely. I don't usually tape off any of my drawers or anything when I'm spraying, so this piece is going to be sprayed first with the drawers out to get the frame, and then we'll go ahead and pop those drawers in and get around those edges. This is just my first coat of paint, and I chose not to prime this piece. I feel like it's going to be okay. It does have a heavy wood grain with some texture in it, so I think that's going to give the paint some bite, and I did give it a little bit of scuffing to accept the paint a little better. Now that the frame is nice and painted, I'm going to go ahead and pop these drawers back in and this allows me to get all around the edges of the frame on the inside so it looks complete and I don't have any of that wood showing through. A few tips on spraying your paint. Climate does matter. So I'm in California. The weather is usually not too humid, um, but you don't want to spray in the hottest part of the day and you also want to make sure that your air humidity is pretty low. To get started and figure out the settings on your gun, make sure you spray onto a piece of cardboard first. This allows you to know that it's not going to come out in a weird spray or with an orange peel texture as soon as you go onto your piece. So go ahead and put a piece of cardboard down and spray onto that first. And then I'm going to work in small sections moving across the front of the piece and not stopping as I go. This piece ended up taking two coats sprayed, which used about a half of my quart of one hour enamel. Moving to the sides of the piece, you can change the direction of the spray on your spray gun by just adjusting the nozzle. So in this case, we're going to use a horizontal spray for the base and the top and then fill it in with a vertical. Once you get the settings on your spray gun dialed in, this is pretty easy. And then if you spray the same paint consistently, it just works out that you can leave those settings the same and spray repeatedly. I'm gonna do something here that I don't normally recommend and I decided I would a wood stain top on this piece and so I'm gonna strip the top after the body is painted. This requires a huge amount of caution and I would recommend normally if you're gonna do this to strip the top first before you get that paint on the body. If I had even one drip, I would mess up the paint finish on my piece. I'm brushing on Jasco stripper onto the piece and I chose to do this. I did do a test spot with my sander first. This piece just had an incredibly thick clear coat. It would have taken me ages to sand. So I'm going to go ahead and use a chemical stripper. Chemical stripper is not in place of sanding. It's in addition to sanding. So it actually means a little bit more work when I do need to use a chemical stripper. So I usually try to sand if I can and then only take out the stripper in cases where I really need to. 
You can see here after my first coat of stripper, I still had a really stubborn layer of clear coat. I was getting quite a bit off, but it did take me two and in some cases three um, applications of my stripper to get through this incredibly thick clear coat. This one was well protected. With my top completely stripped down, I'm going to give this a paint wash, and that's because I want to give it a sort of bleached wood look, and the paint is going to dull down some of those orangey tones that are in the wood. Um, I'm using the color Restoration, and I'm spraying my wood down with a water bottle to dilute the wood. Um, that way it accepts the paint. I'm going to keep this paint wet the entire time I'm working with it, so I just continuously spray it until I have a coat across the top that's nice and even, and I can wipe it back. The other option some people do is go ahead and mix their paint with some water in a dish, I do it this way just so I don't end up mixing too much or too little. I use just the right amount of paint and I just keep it wet the entire time. So two options that you can do a paint wash over raw wood. This color restoration is a light sandy beige color and it is the perfect color for doing these whitewashed wood looks. Another option to this would be to use sort of a beachy wood stain. I chose to use the paint in this case. They do provide pretty equivalent results so you can use either one when you want to get the same look. I felt like this light wood top really complemented the body color and gave me the look that I was after. Once I've brushed on a really thin layer over the top of this entire piece and I've kept it all wet so the paint can still move, I'm going to brush it on nice and evenly, make sure I get it into all the grain of the wood, and I've given it a minute to go ahead and absorb into the grain of the wood as well. The key to doing this wash is I want to make sure that I don't let that paint dry because I do need to come back and wipe this paint back. So I'm going to go grab a rag and we're going to come wipe this back. When I'm wiping, I'm going to wipe in long, even, linear strokes. I'm just using a lint-free rag, and I'm going to wipe from one end of my piece to the other, trying to keep my um, wiping as even and consistent as possible. As my rag starts to absorb some of the paint, I do flip it to another direction, so I'm working with a clean side of the rag. Once I've got a nice, thin, even coat over the entire top of the piece and my wood looks good, I'm going to let this dry overnight, and then I can come back and add my clear coat. Speaking of clear coat, I used one hour enamel on the body of this piece, so I won't need to clear coat the body, just that top where I exposed the raw wood. Time to give some love to my hardware. I let the hardware soak overnight in a mixture of white vinegar and water, and then I'm going to go ahead and scrub it down using some steel wool and a wire brush. This hardware was just really tarnished. It did clean up to a nice gold, but I did end up deciding to go ahead and paint these with a spray paint just to make them the brightest gold possible. Along with my hardware, I also taped off the base of this piece. It had some really pretty legs and a pretty cool base. So I taped off the base and I gave that a coat of spray paint as well. And I'm gonna make the base nice and bright gold to match my hardware. One little tip I wanted to show you is I did get a tiny, tiny bit of overspray onto the body of my piece when I pulled that tape off. Um, and so you can use Wiseal Furniture Salve and this is an oil that will remove the spray paint. I did this while my spray paint was nice and fresh, a little bit of my furniture salve onto a shop towel, and a light rubbing over my fully dried paint, and it's going to remove any of that excess spray paint where I don't want it. With the base and the hardware back on, this piece is complete. I staged it with some kind of earthy looking staging supplies um, that pulled out the green color that's in the body and some blues to complement it. I think it really complements the look. What do you guys think? This piece is gorgeous. I love spraying Wise Owl Winter Enamel. It sprays beautifully. It's incredibly durable and no need to top coat it either. As always, you can find links for everything I use in the description for this post, including the new Wise Owl Winter Enamel colors. You can find more Brush by Brandy on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and YouTube, and my website at brushbybrandy.com. And don't forget to click that subscribe button.